Let's take a look at how the polarity of molecules can be seen on a large scale physical level. Remember that a polar molecule has a net molecular dipole. The bond dipoles then are asymmetrical and do not cancel. For example, carbon tetrachloride most certainly has four lovely polar bonds between carbon and chlorine, but because they are all have an equal and opposite angle, all of the bond dipoles cancel and carbon tetrachloride is overall a non-polar molecule. Whereas with chloroform, this is a polar molecule. Two of the bond dipoles do cancel as they're coming out at equal and opposite angles, but the third one does not. This bond here is not balanced out by this bond coming up because the bond going up is just to a hydrogen. So it is a nonpolar bond and therefore cannot cancel the bond dipole. So this has an overall net dipole. It is a polar molecule. Polar molecules then have an imbalance of electron density. A nonpolar molecule has no overall net partial charge. So you can see how with the carbon tetrachloride here, just kind of end up with an overall light purpley sort of blob here, where on my polar molecule, I do have a partial negative side, the pinks down here, the partial negative, and a partial positive side where I have less electron density. And you can see the overall net dipole is this yellow arrow pointing down. This means that a polar molecule will then interact with an electric field. And I have a little demonstration here, a little video taking ammonia, which is a polar molecule, and seeing what happens if we interact that with an electric field. So if we turn on the electric field here, we can see we have a positive electrode and a negative electrode. And in this case, the molecule lines up so that the partial negative charge on the nitrogen is attracted to the positive electrode. And the partial positive side is oriented towards the negative electrode. You can see I switched the field direction here and the molecule rotated again so that it lines up that negative side always with the positive electrode. So we can then make a small static electrical field using static electricity and a piece of PVC pipe. If you rub a piece of PVC pipe with a cloth, you can rub electrons off of the cloth onto the PVC, or in this case, the diagram says polyethylene, but PVC works the same way. So the PVC gains electrons from the woolen cloth and becomes negatively charged. So I have a static negative charge here that will then be able to interact with a polar molecule. So the molecules we're going to study, we're going to look at water, we're going to look at methanol, and we're going to look at toluene. And so right now you should take a minute to predict which of these molecules are polar? And therefore, which of these molecules should we see be affected by the static electrical charge on the PVC pipe? So take a minute now to make a prediction about the polarity and which molecules we should see affected by the pipe. So if I start this stream of water flowing, you can see it goes directly down from the burette into the beaker. But if I take this piece of PVC pipe, which I've charged with by rubbing it with a rod, you can see that putting that charge near the stream of water deflects the stream. And it deflects it quite a bit. That makes sense from what we know about water, doesn't it? But if I bring the charged rod close to it, you can see that it affects 
the stream of the water because of the static electricity on the rod. So I have essentially the identical setup here with methanol now in the burette instead of water. And I'm going to charge up my rod using some wool to put a charge on the rod. And then we'll start the flow. And we can see it flows the same way, just straight down in a nice coherent stream. But again, if I get the rod close to the stream, the static electric charge affects the stream of the methanol. And does that make sense with what we know and, and can intuit about methanol? The last substance we're going to test in this situation is toluene. And I've put the toluene into the clean burette and we're going to have it flow down into a beaker just like we've done before. So the setup is very, very similar. And you can, I'm working very hard on getting plenty of charge on this rod to the point where I can actually hear little bits of crackling. So I'll start this up. And again, we can see a nice coherent stream. But when I bring this close, the toluene is not affected by the rod at all not even a little bit. Does that make sense with what we would expect from this particular structure? Should it be a polar molecule that would be affected by my rod?